That is a nasty storm blowing in. Let me just uh, wipe this visor of mine a little bit. There we go. What's up, fellow star citizens? Whiplash here with a quick tutorial video. So, I'm standing in the freezing cold and howling winds of Microtex Moon of Euterpe. Why am I doing that, might you ask? Well, it's uh, nice and quiet and peaceful for one thing. And for another, uh, because I've landed on the dark side of the moon as it were, there's a little bit of light starting to creep over the horizon. It gives me the perfect opportunity with some nice contrast against the dark background to show off the new ship HUD busy coming in 3.14. So this is going to be a quick tutorial of the changes to the HUD and uh, what's new about it so that when you finally jump in and take a look at it you'll be familiar with the layout and everything that's happening. Yo really is getting difficult to see what's happening and it's cold and I've only got 10 minutes left on my survival estimate so let's jump in the ship get under the minus 115 degree centigrade cold and uh, yeah, wipe that visor off again and then sit down and show you what's what Right, so the first thing you'll notice is the moment that you sit down, the new HUD elements pop up. Um, I'm not sure whether this is going to be the case going forward or whether uh, you know, they will in future only switch on the moment you switch the power on the ship. At this stage they're visible from the get-go, but that makes it easy for me to point out everything that's new above and beyond what's already there. Uh, the HUD is currently the same for pretty much all the ships, so regardless of what you fly, it will look the same. Uh, the colors will differ as they do currently for the different ships, so in the Drake ships it'll be green, if you fly Mustang it'll be orange, red for a Vandal ship, etc, etc. Um, I've got my trusty RSI blue, uh, together with some red highlights here, so um, let's dive in and have a quick look at the layout, and then I'll show you some of the bits in action. So we'll start with what's familiar. Over here, and I can zoom in a little bit, you have your velocity indicator, pretty much the same as it used to be, just with some new color elements. So over here, uh, the square will indicate your speed limiter. So my speed limiter is set to the point between uh, SEM speeds, uh, well, where it's safe to to maneuver uh, where your ship's a bit more maneuverable for combat versus the red zone obviously which indicates higher speeds but lower maneuverability so you can switch that on and off and uh, it will indicate the position of the velocity limit um, with your current velocity obviously being indicated here obviously that being zero the ship's thruster output is over here on the left over here you've got new indicators to show whether you are in coupled or decoupled mode whether your um, enhanced stick precision for joystick users is switched on whether your landing gear is currently deployed or not and there's a fourth one if you look very closely you'll see it over there VTOL mode which doesn't apply to the Aurora but if you've got something like a Cutlass or other ships that have multiple flight modes that will be an option there as well just so you don't get confused over what mode you're in Switching to the right hand side, um, the GSAFE indicators over here as well as a G readout and this is new. It's a little uh, graphical indicator that shows you the G forces that you are currently experiencing as a pilot along a graphical axis, which is pretty nifty. I'll show you what that looks like in action once we take off. You've got your hydrogen and quantum fuel readouts over here and then um, here you've got a lock warning for a missile lock, you've got your decoy and noise, so the countermeasures and the current counts that are available for those. Up here you've got your weapons indicator, so those are currently powered off. In fact, just to make things a little more clear, let me power on the ship and then you can see some of these in action. So the hydrogen and quantum fuel indicators have now uh, climb to show my current fuel levels 
these in truth are a little bit hard to read at the moment they don't have a graphical well they've only got the graphical representation they don't have a number next to them to show you a fuel percentage um, it, I would personally like these to be a bit clearer in terms of what my current fuel level is versus maximum because you, know, you can see that hydrogen is less than 100% but I can't really judge just from a glance what my current fuel levels are I can only see that it's not full so that maybe needs a little bit of work but as with everything uh, this new HUD is a work in progress up here you can now see that these are my weapons readouts and uh, these I'll dive into in a little bit more detail perhaps in a later video on power management but the short version of this is that as part of the massive weapons and power rebalance happening in 314 uh, energy weapons have now got an ammo readout and I say ammo in inverted commas because what it actually indicates is a charge level um, so which is represented as an ammunition count it's not actually ammo because this will recharge obviously it being an energy weapon if you have a ballistic weapon then this will show the ammunition count when that gets to zero obviously all you get is click click oops um, because those don't recharge they actually run out of ammunition with an energy weapon it will recharge so that's off to the right and left now for the center bit and this is where some of the biggest changes have come in and the ones that I'm personally uh, most excited about so zooming into the center portion of the HUD uh, the altimeter is and it's been there before um, it works a lot better than it used to but I'll show that to you in just a minute so I'm currently 384 meters above the core of the moon it doesn't show zero so it's not relative to the surface it's relative to the center of the planetary body that you are landed on here's the really exciting bit for me is uh, the section here in the middle so we've now got a proper directional indicator as in a compass so I'm currently pointing 190 degrees relative to the planet that I'm on the navigational grid of the planet I'm on I suppose is the best way to put it um, it has a north south east west indicator which I'll, I'll show you once I take off you can turn around a little bit and um, yeah this obviously being a level indicator the way that it was so a sort of a pitch indicator for if your nose is, is level or not and right up here we've now got uh, readouts of your ship's signature so how stealthy you are on the left here you have got infrared I'm currently showing quite a large infrared signature probably because the power is on in the middle is your cross section you'll see that this one is quite narrow because the Aurora being a small ship I don't have a big cross section and on this side you've got electromagnetic so IR readout, cross section readout, electromagnetic readout and these will change as you switch components on and off or do specific things if you fire your weapons your IR will probably increase etc. Right, let's show you this in action. So I'm going to take off. Take off. And retract my landing gear. So now the landing gear indicator disappears and let's head out of Atmo so immediately you'll see the new altimeter for me is a brilliant improvement over the previous one because you can clearly see your altitude climbing with a nice rolling read out there uh, my compass heading is changing as I yaw there we go now I'm heading southwest so this is brilliant now if you need to give directional indicators to someone um, you can finally show in which uh, direction you're heading according to the compass another thing I quickly wanted to show and this relates more to power management which I'll probably do another video on later is uh, the boost capability I just want to quickly throttle down a little bit so I can show that more effectively before I actually get out of Atmo is that uh, if you hit the boost button which used to be known as afterburner you get a readout of that from your uh, from your HUD to show that you are busy boosting and that uh, will help increase your ship's uh, 
engine output. There we go. So now on the left hand side there's my boost indicator. You can hear the engines spooling up to increase the power output. Acceleration increases. Now I'm entering Atmo again. So there's a subtle little change as well. There you can see the G-force indicator in action. So I'm pulling six G's of acceleration which now gradually decreases back down to 1G of acceleration again. Here's another thing I quickly wanted you to see which I thought was pretty cool and that is the altimeter. So let's get some altitude again. Once you reach um, sufficient altitude, keep an eye on the altimeter here quickly. You can see the g-force uh, increasing again as I accelerate. That's a nice visual readout. So I'm gaining altitude and at the point where I exit the atmosphere, which will be any second now, it changes to a pitch indicator. So the pitch indicator disappears from the middle of your readout and your altimeter becomes a pitch indicator because obviously you don't need that once you're outside of atmosphere. So now the pitch indicator sits there on the right hand side. I can see exactly what the pitch of my ship is. And now that I'm out of atmosphere, my compass heading has changed from a wind direction to just an absolute readout in terms of degrees from 0 to 360. And it's now being measured instead of relative to the planet or moon that I'm on, it's being measured relative to the galactic plane. So my pitch is relative to 0 degrees galactic as well as my heading. So these are a couple of subtle but very cool changes, I think, in terms of the HUD. Uh, it's nice and clear. Uh, if I have one complaint, it's the fact that it sort of sits on top of your existing MFD readouts. Depending on the ship that you're in, it may look uh, more or less cluttered or you know overlap a bit more or less with your readout. In the Aurora, it's okay. It's sort of on the edge. Some of the bottom indicators overlap with... Uh, my MFD readouts so that reduces the readability just a little bit but I'm sure that will be changing in future as they tweak and modify the HUD. This like I said is just the first version of this new HUD layout. It will be changed in future to be more manufacturer specific. So um, one or two more things I can quickly show you just in terms of uh, the readouts. I've already shown you what boost looks like so there's the boost indicator coming up on the left um, if I fire my weapons, now keep an eye on the ammo readout here. Again, like I said, this is a charge indicator for the weapon. So, as I fire my weapons, you'll see that the charge decreases all the way down to zero. Ballistics ammo, no. Ballistics out of ammo. It's not actually ballistics, so that is a bug that they need ballistics to fix. Ammo, no. Ballistics out of ammo. These are uh, energy weapons, but in any case, so they lose charge and regain charge. This is part of the Greater Weapons Rebalancing Initiative. But um, yes, so that's your ammo readout, or rather weapons charge readout. And um, I'll, in a future video, talk about the new power management system and how that affects what you're seeing over there. One other quick change that's worth talking about is the missile operator mode. So currently. I'm firing my ship's um, weapons. Uh, if I want to fire missiles now, normally you would just lock and fire those in addition to locking your missiles. Now you have to switch to missile operator mode. So you'll see now my my uh, weapons have disappeared and I've now got the missile readout showing that I've got four Dominator 2s that can be locked. I don't have anything to lock onto at the moment, but uh, if you had a missile target then you could use that to lock onto it, although from what I understand, missiles can be dumb fired. So switching back to guns. Um, I think that about covers it for the new HUD. So uh, I think it's a pretty cool change. There's a lot of uh, familiar bits and also a lot of new bits to get used to. I love the addition of the compass, of the pitch indicator, of the altimeter. And um, yes, yeah, so it just. Uh, it presents information in a nice clear way 
Um, now we just really need a rework of these old MFDs because these have been around for a long time and uh, they are in need of a bit of work in terms of I think just clarity, readability and overall usefulness. But that will be coming down the line so yeah hope you found this interesting and informative so that when you jump into 314 you will know what it is that you're looking at when this new HUD pops up. So I'll leave you with one of my usual beautiful exterior vista shots. Here's uh, Uterpi behind me, Cleo right over there and there is the planet of Microtech. So this is actually a lovely shot showing two moons and one planet in the same view. Beautiful. Right, 314 will be available soon hopefully, then you can jump in and experience it for yourself. So until then, fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.